Hey guys, Ivan here and in today's video we got a couple of very interesting bodybuilding updates. We are starting with Nathan Diasha with this freaky back update in which he looks absolutely nuts. This reminds me a lot of Phil Heath for example. I mean, it's filtered heavily and the lighting is really good, but he's a couple of days out of his next show, which is, as you can see, Mr. Big Evolution Portugal. Bro and Nathan Diasha right now looks like he can win that show. Now, you guys know that recently Nathan competed against the Backrus Tabani at a Flex Pro Italy, and he lost. Backrus won. It was a close show, if you ask me, but Nathan's conditioning was not as good as it could have been. He was full, though, he was really, really full, he was probably at his biggest, at least in the recent years, but as far as conditioning, it wasn't exactly the best, Packers definitely out-conditioned Nathan, and he was well aware of that. He mentioned somewhere at some point that the next show he does, he's gonna improve that conditioning, he's gonna come in sharper, and that's exactly what he did, he definitely improved that conditioning significantly. You can see the glutes are definitely a lot drier, the lower back much more conditioned, the lower lats are showing separation that I don't remember ever seeing on Nathan Diasha. And he's a couple of days out, so he can dry out even more if he wants to, but I think this is pretty much it. Like, he doesn't need to change much, he just needs to cruise into the show looking like this, and this is gonna be phenomenal. So now the question is, with these improvements, with the better conditioning, can he win Portugal Pro? Who else is doing it? Well, William Barnack is doing it. And this is his most recent physique update. So he is also coming really conditioned. These guys have the same coach. Stefan Kinzel is coaching both William Barnack and Nathan Viasha. So we can expect both of these guys to be on, right? To be in their best. Who's gonna win this? Well, at the, at the Ampro Cup Spain, Barnack managed to beat uh, Behrus Tabani. But it was a very, very controversial show. I mean, a lot of people felt like Beckers deserved the win at that show. Bonac was definitely not at his absolute best. He did improve from the last time we saw him on stage in terms of leg fullness, at least. But upper body wasn't where it was when he was at his prime. So, yeah, definitely not the best Bonac. Uh, Beckers was spot on, if you ask me. I think he improved his conditioning even more for the next show for the Flex Pro Italy. But at this show, I think he could have went either way. I can see why Monarch won, but it was extremely close. And you guys know that Beckers was qualified for the Mr. Olympia for the past three years, and he just can't get into the United States to compete in the Mr. Olympia. Bonac can, so there is a talk about that. Like, they gave it to Bonac because he can compete at the Mr. Olympia. I don't know how much sense does it make, but that's what the people say. And now we're gonna have a qualified Mr. Olympia competitor, William Bonac versus Nathan Diasha, who still didn't qualify, but most likely also won't be able to get to the US. So... I guess politics won't really play a role at this show, at least we know that. Now as far as who looks better, Nathan Diasha or William Bonac, in my opinion, Nathan Diasha all day long. His physique is definitely a lot more clean, he's more symmetrical, more proportionate, he has a better structure, better shape and so on, and the only thing that Bonac has going for him right now is like the conditioning and hardness. You know, he doesn't have the shape, he doesn't have the structure, one of his lats is a little bit melted, like one of the quads, he doesn't have the best separation, uh, like the, the shoulders, the arms, they lost the fullness, the chest as well. Nathan is like at his best right now, and I think he's a bigger man right now. I mean, we don't know what's gonna happen until we see them on stage, but as of right now, with improved conditioning, and this is actually looking pretty freaky, right? Pretty nuts. All things considered, I do have Nathan winning this show. Even though he lost to Beckers, I think he can win this. But yeah, of course, Bonac is the favorite because he just beat Beckers and Beckers beat Nathan. But if we're talking about the physiques themselves, personally, Nathan is my favorite. But if you guys feel otherwise, you can tell me down below in the comment section. Now, here is another guy who was definitely the favorite to win the Portugal Pro. He was on the list, and even now he's on the list. So if there is any confusion about him doing the show or not doing the show, he is not doing Portugal Pro. He was supposed to, but he decided to pull out because of shoulder issues. He had a shoulder injury, and that's why he wasn't at his best at the Ampro Cup Spain, and that's why he stopped his entire competitive season. He's not gonna do the Dubai Pro as he planned, he's not gonna do the Mr. Olympia, of course, 
But he did update us with what is going on in his life right now. He posted this little clip of training and he says uh, fifth training since the competition and that's two leg days. I train within the scope of possibilities and range of motion. This is uh, auto-translated so I'm trying to make sense of this. So he says also that he's currently in a calm regime and he's focused on his mental well-being. Health is the most important thing for him and he's looking forward to training again normally because right now he's training like he was training when he was 15 years old and only started to train he says that we can expect great things from him and he can't wait to start again now i don't know if he has any plans of doing a surgery on that shoulder i don't know how bad it really is but apparently he's not training a lot he trained only five times since the show and those were two leg days so he's not doing a lot for his upper body Considering that, he actually is looking very good. The conditioning, however, it's already pretty much gone. He looks a lot softer. He doesn't look like he will step on stage anytime soon. So, yeah, no shows are in his plans in any recent future. But as far as, like, uh, next show or, like, whatever his plans are, I don't know. We don't know. I mean, he's taking it easy right now with the training, but that's something he usually does. Like, after each show, he really relaxes a lot in the off-season, he takes some time off of training and so on, and he really starts pushing it when his prep starts. So I think he's just gonna take some time off and let that shoulder rest up, and it's probably gonna be fine, at least that's what he hopes. So I don't think he has any plans of doing a surgery, it's probably not that bad, it seems like he hopes it's gonna go away with a little bit of rest, and that's it. But, you know, muscularity-wise, at the Emperor Cup Spain, he looked uh, as big as usual. He didn't look any smaller. He just wasn't in condition. If he was conditioned as Bonac or as Behrouz, he would have won this show pretty easily. Like, he was definitely the most complete guy on that stage. I mean, he's a top 7 Olympian. Yeah, he missed the mark with conditioning because of a shoulder injury, but if he was spot on, he would have wiped the floor with all of these guys. I mean, look at this guy, look at Mikel Crisio from last year's Emperor Cup Spain, in good conditioning. Like, this was pretty nuts, man. This was really crazy. Like, he knows how to get in condition. He can do it uh, when everything is alright. And with his shape, with his structure, with his clean, very, very clean look, with those freaking huge arms and, like, round muscle bellies, yeah, like, there isn't a lot of bodybuilders in the world that can beat him. I mean, there is six of them, and that's even arguable. The Mr. Olympia, I could have seen him place even higher than seventh. So, once again, unfortunately, we don't get to see him at a Portugal Pro. I don't know which show he has in plans, but right now he's just focused on uh, health, on fixing the, the, the injury, whatever it is, and we'll probably see him next year better than ever. Alright, next up, we got a proper physique update from Callum Von Moger. Finally, we can see basically his full physique. He's showing off his legs as well, and he's hitting the bodybuilding poses. Now, Callum, unfortunately, made it pretty clear that he has, right now, he doesn't have any intentions of competing again. He's not training for any competition, he's only training for his mental well-being, which does make a lot of sense, but would he get this freaking big and this jacked, this shredded just for his mental health <laughs> or is this just happening so easily for Callum like once he's back on the juice and training regularly and eating a little bit more protein this is what happens with his physique you know muscle memory is a huge thing but this much I don't know but if it is the case then man he has some insane genetics like look at the freaking conditioning like he's almost stage ready basically and as far as legs, this is the first time we're seeing his legs since this uh, comeback. You guys know that he had a really nasty knee injury, and that's basically how it all started, his, his whole down path. And uh, now he's back, but his, his legs were never really his strongest point. So even here, they're not exactly looking, they're not exactly matching his upper body. They're definitely a lot smaller. So if he wanted to compete in a pro league, like he's a pro, he turned pro, if he wanted to like win pro shows, he would definitely have to bring those legs up. 
conditioning, it's awesome. His upper body looks great. I mean, I don't see him being like top 10 at the Mr. Olympia or anything like that, not even close, but, you know, there are like 60 guys at a Mr. Olympia stage in classic physique, so like he can probably qualify. It's not that difficult. Like there's a lot of guys in that uh, classic physique category, the Mr. Olympia, who are looking much worse than Callum. So if he improved those legs a little bit and came in conditioned, he would probably be able to qualify for the Mr. Olympia in classic physique. But again, this is just me talking, speculating, I gotta do it, I can't resist, I'm a bodybuilding fan, I gotta think through that lens, because he is a competitor, he made it clear he has no plans of competing, but you never know, he can change his mind, it's not impossible, but yeah, he's in great shape, great conditioning, the size is back, like, there are certain things that he needs to improve, he wants to, like, be very competitive, again, I'm talking about this, but really, like, I would like to see more lats, more chest, more legs, for sure, arms are great, shoulders are great, but, like, chest, lats, and uh, legs, that's what he needs to improve on, but, like, he has the size overall, he has nice shape and conditioning, he can get it easily, There's no issue with that, he was always, like, always super shredded, I remember when he competed at that show, like, before his pro qualifier, he dieted for, like, two weeks, literally, it was, like, a mini, mini cut, and he was stage ready, so... That's no issue with Callum, it's all about like maybe improving his physique, especially growing the legs, and yeah, he can be a great classic physique competitor, but as of right now, that's not in his plans, but he is looking great, and I'm happy to see him back on the horse, not that, you know what I mean, I'm glad to see him back in the gym and back in bodybuilding and looking nice and healthy and so on. If he decides to compete, it would be really awesome, really exciting, but if he doesn't, that's okay. Whatever you guys think, tell me down below in the comment section. If you guys enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. For more content like this, guys, subscribe to this channel. Thank you so much for watching. See you soon. All the best, and bye-bye.